Hi everyone, this video is really a continuation from the parent function video. So if you go back in the summer review packet, um, on one of the first pages, we described the 10 or 12 parent functions we, to what they look like as well as their domain and range. Now this is a continuation of it. So what this does is now, what if we have certain transformations performed on those parent functions? How does that change the domain and range? So just to be clear, if you have a coefficient in front of the x for whatever the function is, that is often a stretch, a compression or a reflection, which may reflect or which may change uh, the range. This h is a horizontal shift or a horizontal translation, either left or right. That can also, for some functions, affect the domain. And then finally, the plus k. So if you have your function again at the very end, if you see a an adding or a subtracting of a constant, that is a vertical shift or a vertical translation up or down. And that too um, can affect the range. So the original function for this very first equation is just the square root of x graph. And we know that the domain of this is greater than or equal to zero. And the range is also greater than or equal to zero. But what you need to recognize here is that this right here is shifting the whole graph left one. And this minus four, think of that as the k, this is shifting the entire graph down four. What is the two doing? The two is stretching it, so the y values are um, increasing by a factor of two of what they would normally be doing. So just keep that in mind. But that really won't affect the range. This 2 won't affect the range because notice it's already going up to infinity. Guess what? It's still going up to infinity. Maybe it's just getting to the bigger numbers a little bit faster. So for this one, I'm going to say that the domain is not 0 to infinity anymore. Because we shifted it left 1, it is now negative 1 to infinity. And then the range instead of 0 to infinity, we shifted it down 4, is now negative 4 to infinity. For the next one, the parent function is just x squared, but a few things are happening here. This minus sign, think of that as the a value, the a value that I'm referring to up here, uh, is negative, and a negative a value is a reflection. So normally, this parabola, just x squared, remember it opens up, its domain is all real numbers. Whoops, got to throw the negative in front. And then the range is greater than or equal to zero. So when this a is negative, it is now flipping it. So now it is not opening up like I have drawn in green here. It is now opening down. And then this four, think of this as the k value. This is a vertical shift that's saying up four. So the domain was all real numbers, and it still is. The range is now negative infinity all the way up to 4. Again, why is it all the way up to 4? Because remember, the k value shifted it up 4, so it starts here. But then because a is negative, instead of opening up like this, it now opens down like that. So the highest value is the vertex. So the maximum, the maximum y value is 4. For the next one, here the 3 is the a value for sine, and this is a k value. Again, k is negative, so we're shifting everything down 1. And this 3, we're going to uh, or we're gonna kind of visualize it stretches by a factor of 3. So for regular sine of x, the domain is all real numbers. I'm just going to abbreviate. And the range goes from negative 1 to 1. Closed uh, brackets here because it does hit negative 1 and it does hit positive 1. So now this 3 is basically saying, now this goes from negative 3 to positive 3. So it's just taller wave form. But then shifting down 1, so instead of, well here, let's write our answer. The domain is still all real numbers. The 3, what does the 3 do to the range, we just said it's now negative 3 to positive 3. But then this shifting down 1, we're going to find that if I subtract 1 from both of those, I find that the range is now negative 4 to 2. There should be a bracket there. Sorry, my stylus isn't working well. 
Keep moving on here. Here's an exponential function. So the original domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. And then the range is only greater than zero because there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero at the x-axis. So our domain is still going to be all real numbers. And what does this 5 do? So this stretches it. So again, it's going to go up to infinity. Guess what? It's just it's going to have y values at infinity maybe a little bit sooner or earlier. Um, because the base is less than 1, 1 half, it is decaying. So that means it starts up at infinity and comes down. But then this minus 3 here, this is that uh, k value. So for us, this is telling us the horizontal asymptote is now y equals 3. So instead of y, or excuse me, y equals negative 3. So instead of y equals 0, the x-axis being our asymptote, it's now negative 3. So I'm going to say the range here is going from negative 3 to infinity. So what does this graph look like? Really, the horizontal asymptote here at negative 3, it's decaying. Again, a very general sketch, it's looking like that. So notice there's a parenthesis here, not a bracket, for the range because it never actually hits y equals negative 3. As I move along here, a natural log graph, original domain of a natural log graph is strictly greater than 0. So notice there's a uh, parenthesis at 0. And the range is negative infinity to infinity. So this 2, again, the vertical stretching, won't affect the range because it's all real numbers already. So I know that this range will stay all real numbers. But then, the and, and so the 2 as well as the plus 7, the vertical shift, yes, it's shifting it up 7, but it's still going from negative infinity to infinity. It's this value that's going to play a, an effect. So the, here the h value is 2, which is a shift 2 to the right. And so instead of 0 to infinity, we are now shifting it to be 2 to infinity. So there's the domain of that one. Absolute value graphs, um, they look like Vs. So here is my, here's my axis, and so then this V here, I'm outlining it a little thicker. There's the absolute value. The domain is all real numbers, so this new domain is still going to be all real numbers negative infinity to infinity, and then the range was 0 to infinity, brackets at 0 because it hits 0. So this stretch won't affect the, do, uh, won't affect the domain or range. This uh, horizontal shift 6 to the left also won't because the domain's all real numbers. But this k value of negative 10, this is shifting the graph down 10. So instead of the range starting at 0, our answer here is the range now starts at negative 10 and goes to infinity. And lastly, we have a reciprocal function. So the domain of a, of a reciprocal or a, a rational graph is all real numbers except where there's vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator equals 0. So if I set this equal to 0, I find that x is 2, so 2 can't be in our domain. So our domain is negative infinity to 2 union 2 to infinity. So this u is basically saying it's this interval plus this interval, put them together. Parentheses need to be at 2 again because there's a vertical asymptote there. The range, we just have to see if there's a horizontal asymptote. There is a horizontal asymptote. So again, a general sketch of this graph is we already mentioned there's a vertical asymptote now at 2. The horizontal asymptote is still 0. So, you know, if I said, what does this graph look like? It probably looks something like this. You can check it with your graphing calculator. So the range is all y values except 0. So that's how you would write this here. So this is a little bit more challenging. Again, for some functions, the, um, here, let me zoom up here. So for some functions, the h really matters. But other functions, the h doesn't matter. For some functions, the k matters. For other functions, it doesn't matter. Same with the a. So it's really knowing those parent functions. If you find that you're struggling with this, 
go back, review the parent functions, know what they look like, have their domains and ranges memorized, and then try these again. Good luck. Reach out if you have questions.